Thermoacoustics is the interaction of temperature and sound. Thermoacoustics. So what we can do is we can either create a temperature difference and create a sound, or we can create a sound and drive a temperature difference, which is what we do for refrigeration. They're all conversion from one form of energy okay. to the other. That's right. Yeah. We really do two conversions. You just said two. That's right, two conversions. We start with temperature, we go through acoustics, right. and into electricity, right? So there's two conversions, three forms of energy. There's all sorts of things that need cooling, from buildings to blood. Thermoacoustics is a way of doing it in a green, clean way. No oil, no ozone threatening, no global warming potential. Yeah, this is one of our little cryo coolers right here. This is the driver, so you can use the electroacoustic. And then what's this part? This is the thermoacoustic part. So this takes the sound and turns it into heat pumping. This part gets cold this part gets hot. You know, normally when you uh, squeeze something, it gets hot. And when you expand it, it gets cold. And what is sound but a lot of compression and expansion? Uh, normally the amount of pressure change is pretty tiny, otherwise your ears are bleed. But temperature change goes with it's pretty small too. But we've learned to magnify that so that we can get a big temperature difference from the sound. I'm saying that it's, it's more efficient to use natural gas to heat up uh, a device like this and to generate electricity from it than it is to get the heat and use that to heat a room with natural well, gas. Well, you'll still have the heat. So you put the flames on here, which are red hot, you make the electricity here, mm -hmm. and the heat that's coming off this system still heats your house. Mm. You get a lot better use of the fuel that way. Another green advantage. Is that something that you're working on? You betcha. You're you. developing that <laughs> Absolutely. technology? Absolutely. That's great. So it works both ways. It works as refrigeration, it works as a generator. You can't scale this up to a power plant size, but you don't want to. You want to put this in a home. Micro. Micro, micro, and it only makes sense in a home because you don't have to change the oil. There isn't any oil. You don't have to change the filters. There's no filters. It's a permanent, wear-free, sealed system. So you can put it in the basement and forget about it for 20 years. This is the electroacoustic part. You can push on these and you can see the movement. Mm -hmm. Right? They're springing. They want to operate at a certain frequency. I'm going to turn this on. And one thing you'll notice is when I turned it on, it didn't immediately jump to full stroke. Because you dial it in. No. There's a resonance. Think about oh, pushing yeah, your yeah. child on yeah, a swing. You give it a little push and you wait for it to build up. So the space between the pistons is alternately getting squeezed and expanded. And then it leaks out this little hole here. Right. And, this, this and gets delivered into this thermoacoustic section. That's right. right. And if you wanted to increase the refrigeration, you just turn the amplitude of the wave up. Crank so, it up. And that creates not a different frequency, but just a larger wave. So That's that correct. More intensity. More intensity. Yeah. Got it. Right. Now this might look a little more familiar to you. Kind of looks like a refrigerator, because it is. Happens to be a military box, so it's this lovely color green. But our thermoacoustic unit is mounted right on top here. You can see that same double drive. And the thermal parts are reaching right down inside. So you're going to join a small club here. Not too many people have had a chance to drink a thermoacoustically cool beverage before. Well, there you go. You can see the insides like any other fridge. Up here you can see the fins. The heat exchanger you were looking for on the cryogenic unit is now here. There's a lot more there. There's big fins and a fan to move it around. But every time a refrigerating machine turns off, the part that it's been made cold, all the cold metal starts to soak back to the room temperature. Yeah. And all the hot metal starts to soak back. So the first thing when you turn it on again is you've got to make, cool the machine itself. How many watts of electricity would you save by using the thermoacoustic system? Up in our break room, we have an, a conventional refrigerator for sandwiches and things, and we keep a power meter on both, and they're running about even now. Right. Even if this is neck and neck with a regular fridge on electricity, you've got no CFCs and no yeah. hydrofluorocarbons. None of that, and not even any oil. So for from a, an atmospheric perspective, a greenhouse gas perspective, picture, that's right. That's exactly yeah. right. We can't keep making fridges the same way we've been doing it, either legally or from the health of the planet. It's beer o'clock. What'll you have? Uh, a beer? <laughs> I think we can arrange that. Bottle or can? I'll have a can. Sure. You got it. Thanks very much. I'll have a thermoacoustically chilled. A thermoacoustically yeah. chilled brew. I think that's only appropriate. You know what you say? Use thermoacoustics to get ahead.